everybody welcome back to another episode of the health world podcast it's good to be back again we've had an absolute uh, plethora of guests recently this week it is just me and barry again we're going to have a, a good chat about a few interesting things things that are in the news at the moment that are topical and things that are really important in terms of health we're going to get into some pretty big topics today uh so hopefully it will be a good listen for everyone uh barry uh how are you doing you've been busy since i spoke to you last yeah, great to be on again, Ryan. Um, great to see you as always. And yeah, happy to be on having this, uh, this discussion on, on these topics and uh, yeah, just putting more information out there. Um, yeah, always always busy on, on, on this side, um, making good progress with, um, with, the, with the coaching brand. Uh, got some um, the core courses all courses all done now just trying to prepare uh, the filming the demos and we've got some really good um uh, just working with my team on on some really good reels and content um, that we're going to release um consecutively and um, once the, uh, the the course is done and uh, so yeah just to start that that process so looking forward to it and um almost at the point of uh, just doing some uh, working on the uh, the web the web web page for the um, for lo- for local the reaching out locally and working with with people from the community as well, which I think is always a great um, a great way to start giving value to the local community and building up um, your results uh, that way as well. So yeah, um, yeah looking forward to, to that and um, the discussion today. Awesome, awesome, yeah. I just a, I thought I'd just start with a quick question of what's what's the weather like there where you are? Yeah, it's a little bit a little bit dodgy here. Um, always as up here in Glasgow, you just <laughs> never know what you're going to get. But um, it's it's about yeah, it's about 15, 16 degrees. It's dry at the moment. Hopefully, it'll stay that way because I've got a, <laughs> a, a event later on, uh, an outdoor uh, part part of it will be outdoors. Um, so hoping that it at least stays dry, but uh, it's funny because um, yesterday and tomorrow um, is brighter. So you know uh, it would have been nice to get one of those one of those days today, but I think next week is is going to be a bit warmer. Um, yeah. So it's been a lot. It's been it's been a pretty pretty damp and um, uninspiring July, beginning of August. <laughs> I think about yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, today, very grey, very miserable here uh, and a little bit cold, um, which I asked because um, obviously recently we've been being told a lot about this. Uh, they're now calling it global boiling. It's not it's not even global warming anymore. It's global boiling it's tipped over the yeah. scale. Yet um, we're having one of the worst summers we've had in a long time. So, I mean, to me, it, it really doesn't uh, add up and make any sense. Um, to it it's just propaganda that I see really I mean I don't know how much of it you see I, I don't watch the news and um, all the weather but I see people talk about it all the time I don't know if you've caught any of it but it's really they're really going over the top with it yeah for sure the, this actually I actually posted about it on, on Instagram and um, on my personal Instagram again I think a week or so ago um, I normally of course I, the, the mainstream news I have no time for now um, but I do enjoy watching, I think it's GB News on, on mm. YouTube, um, which is fantastic because they talk about the other side, the stuff that does not get propagated and promoted, you know, that that, that same old angle that, that the mainstream push. So they have a lot of very knowledgeable guests on. And uh, one of the guys that I really enjoy listening to is a, a, a guy called Neil Oliver, Scottish guy. And... Um, you know, he's done a lot of, uh, I think his background is in, you know, outdoor, um, exploring archaeology, that sort of thing. He's a really knowledgeable guy. And, you know, he's he's saying exactly the same thing. You know, all these uh, reports about, you know, the, 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 that heat wave in, in, in Europe, about how it's related to climate change, you know, um, when you're getting the temperatures like 44, 45, 46, 47 degrees, and and what he what he was saying is that those temperatures were not actually accurate because that those temperatures are taken from satellite images that measure the ground temperature. That's the temperature of the actual ground, but that's not how temperatures are recorded or, or 
are reported, you know, through the media. The, 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 the actual temperature that's been reported was, is, is always a couple of feet above the ground. So that the actual air temperature were, was in the, the 30s, the late 30s, which is actually not unusual. So all these, you know, the, 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 the kind of pizza, burnt pizza pie maps of Europe with all these, you know, the black and red with all these, you know, 45 and 46, they weren't, they weren't actually accurate. You know, that was the ground temperature, not the air temperature. And I, I, I remember being, you know, as, as a kid in Cyprus, um, you know, years ago in July, and it was absolutely scorching. You know, it was close to 40 then, maybe in, in the early 40s. So if it was, if it was that temperature back then, you know, 20, 20 25 years ago, and it's in, in, in you're reaching those same temperatures now, or not even those same temperatures, then what? where's the change? Exactly. I don't understand where the change is. If something was the same 25 years ago and it's the same now, there is no change. So no. this is why um, a, lot, a lot of this is overblown. I'm not saying that uh, it's, it's not very hot. It, it, it is hot, but look, if it's a couple of degrees warmer every year, then surely, you know... It, by, by by my calculations, if you went to Spain twenty years ago, then in the summer, then it would be about two degrees above freezing. You know, if it's been going up two degrees every year, you know. So, you know, do the maths. It was two. Exactly. Of course, it wasn't. It was the same back then as it is now. And um, you know, it was a really interesting interview. You know, the, just he just gave that 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 whole angle. And you know, again, I'm not saying we, we, the that there, there's there's no you know concern or that we can't do things better that we can be more economical and efficient of course we can you know I, I believe in like recycling plastic and, and, and things like that but the whole thing is overblown beyond belief and now they're trying to make you afraid of the summer or getting some sunshine or getting some vitamin d you know and and and, and your skin and your body and 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 getting all that that benefit from from the warm weather you know which is which, which gives your system a boost. You know, that's been scientifically proven. And trying to make you afraid of that, that it's getting too hot and staying in, it's just absolute nonsense, you know? So, um, yeah, um, it was it was very interesting. And, and that's where you get the real point of view on, on, on sources like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it, independent independent sources. The, sure. the mainstream all reporting the same with their ridiculous... Um, diagrams and you know there's people have got screenshots of you know 10 years ago the weather in the summer and the temperatures are higher but it's just the normal green but then now they've got lower temperatures but they put red and orange on the screen to try and make people scared and exactly. they've changed the way you know you said about the, the ground temperature which is right that's what they take now but it, it didn't used to be it used to be air temperature so they've yeah. changed the way they take temperature so they can try and make it higher and also most of the places now they're taking their temperatures to, to try and achieve these record temperatures are next to airfields. And I saw one, there was one the other day, I think it might've been in the UK. And they said it was a record temperature for the UK. And they recorded the temperature um, next to a runway just after three um, RAF Typhoon jets had taken off. Like <laughs> imagine the heat they're going to create. So it's, it, it's all just, it's all falsified and it's all fraudulent. There's, there's, there's no, it's just summer. Summer is what it is. It's, it's summer. meant to be hot. It's meant to be hot in summer. And like you said, when they're trying to say it was 45, 46, these places in Europe, it's, it's not. It's not all. I was out in Dubai. It was, you know, 40, low 40s um, when I was over there. You know, and that's hot. I mean, it's still not unbearable. It's on, nice on holiday. Maybe you don't be doing a physical job in it. But um, in these places in Europe, it's not, it's not that hot. It, it's not as hot as that. And then yeah. they have the things like in Greece, like the, the, the wildfires and the forest fires. And they try and paint that as part of it, that, that's because of the heat. They, they were all started by people. They're all man-made. Yeah. The, the weather didn't start any of them. So it's just another thing they use to try and push it. And it's just, it's just for control. You know, it's, it's the next, you know, almost a, a scandem, scandem, next scandemic is climate change. It's what they use. They used the flu before to control people. Now they're going to use climate change. And they're already talking about uh, climate change lockdowns, which is what, you know, people within circles that, that we probably move in and have the same pins as have been talking about this for a while that it's going to come. And climate change lockdowns is the next thing that they, they will do. 100% believe that. Whether they do it this year or next year, they will. I think it was one of the, uh, some type of member of parliament in Germany 
that they were actually talking about uh, the other day. They gave an interview where they said, you know, because of, you know, this global boiling and it's so bad, you know, we might need to uh, like restrict people's movement or they might have said it in a different way. Like maybe we just need to travel more. Obviously, when they say we need to I uh, sorry, travel less, not more. But when they say that, they mean you need to travel less. They'll keep traveling the same amount in their private jets. But you, you know, you don't, you can't drive more than 15 minutes in your car because you're killing the planet, but they will fly on a private jet across the world to have a five minute meeting and fly back. But that's fine for them. So it's, it's just all about control. As you say, it's making us weaker again, getting people away from the sun. Same with when we had the lockdowns before and they banned people from going out to exercise. They wanted you to stay in your house. No sun, no exercise, no fresh air makes you weak, makes you controllable. And now, as you say, Oh no, the sun's too scary. Don't go out in the sun. Kill you. Scary. They don't want you in the sun and out exercising and getting fresh air again. It's just making you weak and it's controlling people. And it's sad how many people fall for it. You know, I'm the, for my job, I'm, I'm walk, working in people's houses all the time. You know, when I hear people talking, you know, they're watching the news and they're talking to people. And, and I can tell from, you know, the stuff they're saying and what I hear that they, they fully fall for it. They're completely believing that it's, it's so bad. There's this global boiling and, oh, and really, the world's yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, no. The majority of people are just completely and utterly like fooled by it. They watch the news. That's that's their that's their problem. Like we don't watch the I don't watch the news. I don't watch the weather. I, I hear about it from other people saying it, but they watch the news and they believe it. And it's really sad because so many people are falling for it, and they're going to be shutting themselves away and harming themselves, getting no sun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many great points there and that you've elaborated on. And and you know, just on, on that one, it is very much about about control and restricting you in every single way. We're restricting you in this case, restricting you from traveling. You know, and travel is very important. You need to travel. You want to travel, travel for holiday or travel for business. Um, but it's a free but it, ultimately travel for freedom. If you want to go somewhere, you have a right to go. And, you know, they can swan around in their private jets and everything, you know, and that's fine as long as you're, you know, you, you've got your, you, you, you're just there, um, res restricted, that you've got your, how would you say, allowance for yeah. how far you can travel or how often that you can travel. That's the main thing, but they can just swan around everywhere, um, you yeah. know, burning lots of fuel. That's it. The rules are for the peasants, for us, yeah. and, and not for them. You know, every year you have the... Thing in, I think it's in Davos, isn't it, in Switzerland, where all these world leaders and millionaires and whatever fly in on their private jets and then get these big cars up there to have a meeting about telling us how we need to cut down our carbon emissions and whatever else. And so, like the, I don't know how some people don't see the complete hypocrisy and, and irony of it. Like these people are just causing more pollution than we will ever in our in our lifetime you know the standard person in our lifetime will never create the amount of pollution that these world leaders will create in like a week of their traveling around on their private jets and it's it's just ridiculous and then they also use it to attack food you know as we're saying about health you know with trying to get us to not get the sun and vitamin d and they try and use it to stop people having meat they want to cut down on meat they're trying to say that you know you look at the i mean look at how much pollution china makes um in the world you know america yeah. like some plus some places have been trying to cut down but you know you look at china it's, but it's not it's not to do with all the planes flying around it's not to do with all the factories it's cows fine that's what we need to worry about you know that's what they're trying to convince people with saying that you know we should we need to not eat meat and just eat plants and rubbish and not see the sun and they just want to make us weak and it's it's a load of rubbish if you if you delve into it all their figures are just completely false and cows do not cause any pollution um, to the atmosphere because the methane they produce is part of a natural cycle and it goes into the atmosphere. It's only there for like a couple of years and then it will come back into the ground and they'll eat it and then come out. It, it's a cycle. It, it, it's not adding to the atmosphere. It, it's a continuous cycle, whereas pollution that's being made, uh, man-made, is not part of a, a natural cycle. But also, I mean... Global warming is not a, a real thing anyway. Climate change, in over time, the climate of the planet will slightly change, but it, it's, not, um, it's not driven by humans at all. It's just what the planet does. And if anything, over the last 25, 30 years, the planet's actually slightly cooled down. It's not, 
that we're not having any effect on it. The only thing we affect by pollution is our own health. You, you know, if like if we're in, we could affect the air quality where we're living by all the cars and the factory pollution, but we're not affecting the the planet. The planet's far bigger than we are. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, so a, a lot of great a great points there, and it's it's very much a is very much about um, control, and you know the the the, the, the whole thing about um, you know reducing the meat consumption and everything you know so they can have you eating kibble and eating insects and eating <laughs> all this you know stuff that there is no nutritional value whatsoever, um, and it is again just to make you more more weak, which is because of the lack of nutrition, therefore you're more subservient and um, easier to control and they can just keep doing that, um, you know, just to make you a lot more mal malleable and agreeable to their agenda. Um, so it all ties in and, uh, you know, some of the, I, I read something as well about, about the police, even, even these ele electric cars, how they're pushing the electric cars, you know, that, mm. uh, and you're tr tr eventually trying to get away from, you know, petrol cars, the, the, the battery that is used to, um, to power that, the, the creation of that battery that is used to, to power that el electric car actually causes up more pollution and, and, and to, the, to, the, to the atmosphere and to the, and to the environment than, you know, fossil fuels, you know, but yeah. they, don't, they don't mention that, you know, they just, they just see electric and go, oh, well, that's sustainable and mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, progressive and, and all that, but actually they, these, these, um, these mechanisms caught, uh, to actually create them to make those electric cars run are actually very damaging, even more damaging. But uh, again, that's that's just covered up um, to um, to to make you think that um, it's actually a really good solution. So it's all these it's all these nuances and and the other side that never gets reported that people are not aware of, and yeah. that's something that that you know we're obviously we are we are we are trying to to. Uh, Make, make people aware that we're putting out there, putting out there and making people aware of it. Um, but yeah, the, the whole, the whole meat thing is, um, I mean, that, that is, uh, that, that, that's a really big problem, you know, and, you know, I know there's, there's certain farmers have had problems as well recently, you know, leave them alone, let them do their job, you know, because if you don't have um, a fit, um, you know, a fit, strong, you know, um, capable, community and population then how can you improve the economy you know how can you make life in the world better when um you know you're you're doing the very thing that is going to decrease uh, the performance of the population but at the same time you're making them easier to control so yeah exactly and it's and it's money again because it's a big cycle that they the weaker they make you the worse your health is and the more you need pharmaceutical products which is where they make their money and the more you buy these cheap processed foods which again they make money from so the the food companies the drug companies they're making tons of money you know the governments have always got their fingers in the pies of those companies too and making money for themselves and you know the rest of us are getting sicker uh, weaker poorer and and more controlled and that's just you know that's the way it's uh, the way it's going and, and what they're doing. So people need to educate themselves a bit on these things and take back the control of their health, which is what we always talk about. Starting with your diet, um, we need to take control of our health. We all need to take a bit of time, take the responsibility, and look at what we're eating. Because yeah. I mean, we've kind of you know I've kind of digressed on the weather side, but the, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was. Um, diet and how it affects illnesses and how they're metabolic and especially one i've been i've been looking at recently and learning a lot about is about is about cancer so cancer mm -hmm. there's a lot of misconceptions around cancer in the general world general population but also in the medical world the, the way it's classed in the medical world and all the research they do is completely wrong and completely backwards there's people who are speaking out now about it and trying to get it changed but you know as always it takes a long time uh, but yeah. it, years and years ago, like 50 years ago, more than that, we knew about cancer, that cancer is a metabolic disease. It's not a genetic one, but it's still, it's still thought of as one. And yeah. 
Yeah. Therefore, the treatments we try and do for it and the way we approach trying to prevent it and diagnosing it are completely wrong because we're looking at it as genetic and it's not, it's metabolic, but we've known it for so long. And the only reason that we've not changed the view on it is because of money. Because there's so much money in it. And as a metabolic disease, the way to treat it is with diet and lifestyle and diet and lifestyle does not make money for drug companies. Yeah. Dr drugs and treatments make money for drug companies. And that's why they're unwilling to, unwilling to do it uh, and to change. I don't know if you saw, I, I, I shared a couple of podcasts with you um, about the subject. And I think you watched the one with um, Dr. Jason Fun. And there's actually, yeah. um, he talks a bit in that about how doctors and the medical industry are bribed. Yeah. And about how he's been, you know, offered, taken out and all that, it's, which, uh, you know, I kind of knew it already happened, but it's very interesting to hear it at, actually from him. I don't know if you, you, you saw that bit. I, I did. I found that really interesting. And I had, I had a, a, a strong idea that that, that that was the way it is, that there was that culture. Um, but, yeah, that was very interesting to see someone of that stature, um, you know, talk, talk about that, you know, like, for, for, for example, um, you know, if you want to talk about things that, that, will, that will genuinely decrease the chances of you, you know, contracting cancer, that having a nutritious lifestyle, intermittent fasting, the keto, the carnivore diet, the problem is that there's no money to be made from, from, uh, from that, which is why um, what he was saying is that major universities are not interested in studying or promoting that aggressively. So what you're what what you're getting is um, um, so and the reason the reason for that is because there's no like multi million pound patent at the end of it that they are going to get a, a share of. So again, it does come down to, to 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 the money side. There's no surgical procedure at the end of it that they can they can label if they are going to purport the the, the true solution, um, because uh, you know things like fasting it doesn't cost you any money to do that. But, but there's a lot of research to show that it definitely decreases your chances, and we can go into that a little bit, a little bit later. But um, there's a financial. He was saying there's a financial conflict of interest. So when you get doctors and professors taking money from drug companies, um, it's almost like they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them, and uh, you know which is why they're pushing uh, trials, uh, drugs, and surgery um, instead of pushing something like fasting. Um, and, and th there's very much a, a, a sort of moral code here, you know, where doctors, you know, generally should be make it, and, and, and I know some of them are, but they should genuinely just be paid money for treating patients, but not, not for taking, um, you know, dr money from drug companies to do research where um, they already have the solution for, you know. Um, for, for their own financial gain. So, you know, a big pharmaceutical co company can give, um, you know, a lucrative grant to, to a medical university in order to study how to cure cancer. But um, the solution's already there. So the, the, there's a, definitely a big conflict of interest there. And there's a lot, there's, it's a lot of hypocrisy. So it's almost like taking a, glorif a, a, taking a glorified bribe, if you will, you know, and take a bribe, yeah. but it's okay. Yeah, it basically is. I think he mentioned in it that doctors are basically the only industry, like doctors or, or scientists, you know, researching, basically the only industry where you're allowed to take bribes. You yeah, know, it's fine for them. Right. In, in other places, you, you wouldn't be allowed to, but, you know, they're, they're being paid all this money by a drug company to research cancer. Clearly, they're not going to come back and say fasting is the answer. They're going to come back with some kind of drug which the company can then sell. Like, if you think about you know, things that really annoy me are things like the uh, like cancer research charity things. You know, that people, normal people go out and they spend their time and they donate their hard-earned money and they go out and they do their bit and they think that they're helping to cure yeah. cancer. And they're, they're yeah. putting all this effort in and they've got the best uh, motives. They want to help cancer. Where's that money go? Millions and mi billions of pounds or dollars have been raised over the last however many years for cancer research. And where are we? How, what, what improvements have we made? None. They've come out with new drugs and new treatments, but made no real improvement to survival rates. 
and the the rates of getting cancer are going way up so the, these people who are out there raising money, doing their race for life or whatever, and thinking they're helping, all you're doing is raising money to pay researchers and scientists to produce new products for drug companies to sell. That is all you're doing. They're not actually trying to cure cancer. They're trying to find drugs they can sell. And it, and it annoys me a bit because these people are, are thinking that they're helping and they're, they're doing their best. Obviously, they're, I'm not blaming the people who raise money or the people yeah, who give yeah. money because they're, they're doing it with the, the, the best interest. But you're basically being just manipulated and used to raise money for drug companies. That is what you're being yeah. used for. And it, and it's sad. It's, you know, cancer has been solved for over a hundred years in terms of how to not get cancer, how to treat cancer, but yet we're spending billions of, of pounds a year on research for it when there's no need. And it's, you know, stuff like that really infuriates me. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, it's it's almost like they're just continuing to, you know, they're on they're on board with that. They're just feeding the machine, you know, the, 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 for the, for their own financial gain. And again, it comes back to the, the fact that most people are not willing to do you know a bit of research and and you know look into the nuances and sort of think for themselves or look at other points of view. Um, you know, I know that there's there's types of cancer that um, it's a horrible thing, and you know, even particularly healthy people can 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 get it at some point, and there's there's instances of that happening, and that's a terrible thing, and obviously, but the point is that it's not it's not something that's just like you know. A, a, a thunderbolt from the sky that you just you're just unlucky and it could just happen at any time. You know, it's you you do have we do have a lot more control over it than what has been reported. And if you have a nutritious, optimal lifestyle and you're avoiding um, certain things uh, that that will that will that will damage your your immune system, then you can really decrease the chances of you even contracting it. And then. That also comes on to the fact that you can affect um, the, for, like for example, the if you have a diet that's a lot lower lower in insulin, then th that will severely reduce the risk of obesity related cancers. You know, so like, you know, it's not that oh, we got someone someone got an obesity related cancer. That's just bad luck. No, it's because their insulin was too high and because they they they, they ended up getting diet uh, diabetes and that that led to them contracting that you know so there's just the, we have a lot more of a lot more control over it um than than what is being purported and that is what's something that that needs to be that people need to focus on more and take take yeah. that responsibility and accountability yeah absolutely i mean every everyone cancer cells are your own cells that have just been damaged so everyone has the potential to have cancer and every cell has the potential to become cancerous, but it will only become cancerous through being damaged. Um, so, you know, it's down to your diet and your lifestyle. It won't just happen, as you said, like, a, you know, it's not just a random thing that suddenly happens. And also the thing with cancer cells is it, it has to be something chronic. If, if a cell was, was, is badly damaged in one go, it, it will die. It's, so what it has to be for it to turn cancerous, it has to be over time, uh, you know, over a long time, a long period, chronic damage to it, like small amounts, but chronically. And that is what will eventually turn it cancerous. It can't just happen like that because if there was a change like that in a cell, it, it would die. But over time, the mitochondria becomes damaged um, it, and then the cell just starts doing its own thing and, and yeah. can become cancerous. And as you said there with the ins insulin, is the thing that causes that raised insulin is one of the main drivers of it and the raised inflammation in the body. Yeah. And also once a cell becomes cancerous, then the raised insulin then makes it even worse because insulin is a, is a growth hormone. So when insulin is high, it's telling cells in your body to grow. So if you've had a, if you've, your cells have become cancerous and now you're telling them to grow, they're going to be growing at a crazy rate because they'll grow at more, a higher rate than standard cells because the mitochondria has been damaged. It has no control over that cell anymore. That cell's doing what it wants. Standard cell in the body, the mitochondria is still going to have some control over it and only let it grow a certain amount. The cancer cells, they're just growing like mad. 
And obviously, yeah. if you're spiking your insulin, that means you're, your body's high in glucose. And glucose is the worst thing. If, if you've yeah. got cancer, you need to get glucose out of your diet completely. Because the thing that makes cells cancerous is they, they no longer use ATP for energy. That's what um, the cells will use in their mitochondria for energy is ATP. The cells, they produce it through oxidative phosphorylation. <laughs> Oxford oxidative phosphorylation that's a tongue twister um, as yeah <laughs> but um th- so they use oxygen in the process but cancerous cells they don't so they get their energy a different way and i think it was otto warburg in the 1950s he discovered this and he talked about it then as i say we've known ages ago that it, he knew it was metabolic and basically the cells ferment to get their energy they use a fermentation process because they, they can't use the oxid- oxidation because they've um, damaged their mitochondria and they use fermentation. And the only things they can use are glucose and glutamine. So glutamine is an amino acid and you, you'd really struggle to have a diet without glutamine. And we're going to have glutamine in our bodies, but glucose is the thing that you can cut out and, and they use that for energy. So if you remove glucose, they can't get their energy. And I think cancer cells need 400 times more glucose than a standard cell needs. Right. Because obviously, yeah. because obviously we, our body produces its own glucose for the bloodstream. So we still use some glucose, but obviously if you remove it from your diet and that they're, they're going to struggle to grow because it's 400 times more and they're going to die off and they can't use fat for energy. They can't use ketones for energy. All of the other cells in our body, they can use ketones for energy and fat. So if you cut glucose out your diet, the rest of your cells, absolutely fine. Cancer cells won't be fine. So we know how to get rid of cancer through diet. And yet here we are with all these people suffering and going through these treatments, um, which often have horrible side effects, sometimes worse than the cancer itself, and actually normally lead to um, the patient dying quicker from a lot of these treatments. There's been a lot of research that's shown that actually, especially with lower grade cancers that aren't as aggressive, just leaving the patient alone gives them a longer lifespan than using radiation and chemo on them. Yeah. And even giving them the, the the best diet that they can have during that time, you know, I do know of uh, a couple of uh, instances, and just through through people who have done have who have eaten a very specific diet during it, it was much up a much better um, solution, you know, in, in terms of in terms of treatment than getting all that chemotherapy and radiotherapy and, and, and all that, you know, because that that's actually very damaging. Um, yeah. It is, yeah, and they, they've done. Re- yeah, the, the, I was gonna say they've done research that actually showed that people on a keto diet, if they're on a ketogenic diet, while yeah. they had radiation and chemotherapy, it actually made it work better as well. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, exactly. Um, because the, the the immune system, it's got it's got to it's got to determine the difference between our own cells and, and foreign cells. You know, so so the focus is is, is not on like k- killing the cells or changing the genes, but focusing on like immuno immunotherapy. So, um, to because the 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 immune system, um, because that the, these are like for it's almost like they're it's a foreign invasive species. So you, you've got to understand the, the 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 paradigm of cancer. It's it it it's, doesn't just depend on one thing. It depends on two things. You know, it, it's 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 not just the seed. It's the seed and the soil. So, you know, for example, you know, the, 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 a lot of the common knowledge is that, um, you know, you can't change the, the seed the seed, the, and the cancer of seed. It's just bad luck. You know, and there's nothing you can do about it. But actually, um, if you had a seed of cancer, which exists in us all, but it's planted in inhospitable soil, this is the analogy that, that, that Jason... Uh, fung uses, uh, you know, if it's if it's planted in in hospitable soil, it won't grow. So you have to create the conditions within your body for it to be inhospitable, for the soil to be inhospitable, so that that cell doesn't doesn't grow, and then you can stop cancer in its tracks. So that that a lot of that is related to our diet and our lifestyle. Um, it's all interlinked. Um, I think yeah. the same that when uh, for for example when. Uh, 
Dennis Burkett went to Africa in the 50s and 60s. They were eating a, a very specific type of diet, but hardly any of them were contracting colon cancer. But as soon as they switched to, they started get, eating a more westernised sort of diet, then they started to, to get to contract that more. Um, so that just shows that a lot of it is uh, lifestyle related. Yeah, exactly. The, these, you know, all this cancer was not around. Um, you know, you go back 100 years or more than 100 years and people say, oh, it wasn't diagnosed. But that, that, that's a, you know, it is, that's a poor argument. It doesn't make any sense. Like, OK, no. some stuff could have gone undiagnosed. But even the last 30, 40 years where we've been able to very accurately diagnose stuff, it's going massively up all the time. It is clearly down to uh, lifestyle and diet, as you said. And there's actually a case sure. as well in there's a, a rare condition in e Ecuador. I think it's I think it's only found in Ecuador, pretty much. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's uh, and it's only in women, I think, in Ecuador. But it's it causes dwarfism. But it's basically their body has no um, no insulin or no reaction to insulin, so that's why they don't grow properly because that's a growth hormone. But those people are basically immune to cancer. So anyone who has that basically can't get cancer. So that basically proves the point and shows that it's raised insulin that is causing the damage to the cells for them to become cancerous because their body has no reaction to insulin. I can't remember if it has no reaction or they have no insulin, but either way, insulin is not interacting with their body at all and they're unable to get cancer. So that basically yeah. shows and proves that it is insulin causing it. And not that yeah. Not that insulin is the bad guy because we need insulin in our body. It's we used do. for we do. a lot of good yeah. stuff. It's the fact that through our diet, insulin is constantly raised and too high. Insulin should be, you know, when you, you eat and then, okay, it comes up, um, just a, not a huge spike, but comes up a bit, gradually tapers off, and then it's down for a long time while you don't eat, and then you eat again. So that's why the fasting, um, the intermittent fasting is so good. And that's what yeah. it should be. Like, yes, it will spike a bit when you eat because, um, you know, protein gives it a little spike, but it's not yeah. anything that's bad. But we are spiking it like all day, like up, up, up. And it's staying up for ages because we eat so much um, sugar and it's trying to get this glucose down. And it's the cause of all diseases is insulin, uh, insulin resistance from having too high insulin. Yeah. And, and, and cancer is part of that. And it's exactly the same. And obviously, you know, people are going to say, what about when, you know, kids get cancer and things like that, um, where they've hardly been alive, which obviously, I mean, that's terrible. And, yeah. uh, you know, that could be down to the parents, that the parents could potentially have had cancerous cells in their body, which have passed on to the kids and become cancerous. I, I mean, I don't know the exact answers to that. Obviously, people could say, well, a kid hasn't spent all their life eating whatever. So I don't know. But there is basically hardly any, if any, cancers which are genetic. It's it's down to what's happened in your body. And those cells have been damaged in some way, which is pretty much always through through diet. And if you control your diet, as we've said, you won't. If you have healthy mitochondria, you can't get cancer because you, only damaged cells can become cancerous. So if you don't have damaged cells, if your cells are in good health, you literally cannot get cancer. Yeah. It's, it's that simple. Yeah. Just, ju just, on, just on the point of insulin, I mean, you're, you're, you're spot on there because um, we, it's important not to, make, to, confuse, um, to, to confuse this, that, that insulin is, is bad. It's, it's actually good. You know, you actually need a, a bit of insulin. The problem, problem what you don't want is, is, is chronically inappropriate uh, elevated levels of insulin, especially throughout the day because it's, it's spiking, you know, um, throughout the day. And, um, you know, that's what happens when you're, you're, you're constantly in a fed state or you're, you're, you're eating sugar, you're consuming sugar more than once a day. Um, that's what happens. It spikes. And then that causes chronic inappropriate um, inflammation um, in your gut, which can increase the risk of cancers. So, like, for example, myself, I'll have, I'll, I'll have a bit of sugar. Um, I'll have a bit of chocolate. I normally do. That's something that I'm trying to get down. But I, I at least have it only once a day and only after I broke my fast with lots of protein and, and healthy fats. So it's a lot easier for my body to deal with and, and get in, you know, in terms of my bloodstream, it's a lot easier for it to, to it, it's, it's, the, the risk of that is that I'm 
putting it myself under is a lot less. It's just a lot easier for my body to deal with. Um, and and yeah, in terms of like you know the the the, the role of fasting, you know, it's fasting is one of the, the only ways where you can um, initiate autophagy. You know, so autophagy is really important. That's like self eating. So when you're when you're when your body's carrying out, when you're not in a fed, a fed state, your, body, your body's carrying out autophagy, then that cleans and recycles damaged cells, damaged cells component, which is damaged cells, uh, the damaged cell components. And, and that's induced through um, intermittent fasting, low carb diet and exercise. So instead it will burn fat for its main source of energy. Um, which is a lot more efficient than burning the very red, readily available carbs that the people consume. Um, and there's also been studies to show that there's a link between um, dysregulation of autophagy and a number of other chronic diseases, such as uh, type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, and even like neuroge neurogenerative, neurodegenerative disorders. Um, like Alzheimer's disease. So um, that's why autophagy is very, very important in, in, in this whole process. And, you know, the, 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 the lifestyle, if you will, of fasting uh, initiates that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not just what we eat, it's how we eat it as well. Like you say, fasting is yeah. so, so important and so powerful. And a lot of people overlook it. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people like you look in within the health and fitness world it's still a huge amount of them are giving this eat little and often you know six seven meals throughout the day no that's terrible yeah intermittent fast you're much better eating and don't and don't get me wrong i used to think that like you know don't get me wrong, i was one of them and um, but yeah. then i've since discovered the truth and which is why you know another point we always make you always need to be open to being wrong and to learning new things you know that was my view before and i found out i was so wrong and i've improved my health by by not doing that but eating once or twice you need to give your body those long windows to do the normal processes it does there are processes that your body should do naturally but it can only do it when you've not eaten for a while because when you eat the body's got to work to digest it's got to do all this and that got to digest yeah. it and break it down and move it around the body and whatever and it can't do the other jobs so once you've eaten and then you've left a nice big window then it gets all the digestion done okay now we can start doing the other stuff as you said breaking down the old cells and getting rid of them and and all this stuff and it, re it recycles the cells and makes new fresh ones and it keeps your body healthy and all of these things are going to help to keep you healthy and to reduce your chances of getting things like cancer. And obviously this is why, again, going back to the insulin thing, this is why obesity and type two diabetes are such high um, risk factors for cancer. The obesity um, and diabetes don't cause cancer, but for both of those conditions, you are going to be having your insulin spiked all the time. And that's the same thing that causes cancer. So if you've, if your insulin control is so bad that you are obese or it's so bad that you are type two diabetic, clearly it's also so bad you're likely to get cancer so they're yeah. all linked but they all come from the same thing it's not like obesity causes cancer it's just the same things that cause obesity cause cancer and the same things that cause diabetes cause cancer so if you've got one of them you know there's a good chance you're going to get the other or you're well on on the way to it you know obviously non-obese people can also get cancer because you can be you know skinny fat or you can be thin i mean some people can be in great shape and really unhealthy inside there's yeah. lots of people who, yeah lots of people who absolutely love the gym and they're in the gym all the time and they're piling on the carbs and they might look in good shape on the outside but internally their their bodies can be a complete and utter mess and their health can be a complete and utter mess it doesn't necessarily mean they're healthy inside just because they they look good on the outside and on the yeah. intermittent fasting um within um i think it's uh breast cancer so they did some studies with breast cancer that they found yeah. that um with obviously in women women that fasted for a minimum of 13 hours per day had a much lower chance of their breast cancer coming back than those who just ate constantly so there's, that's right yeah there's there's already uh, there's already a you know there's evidence there i mean obviously there's way more evidence and we know that it works but you know just something as simple and 13 hours isn't even that long you know you can do longer but Fasting is 
is really powerful because if you fast, then your body has to, even if you're not eating like a, you know, a carnivore or ketogenic diet, even if you're eating a normal diet, if you fast, your body will use up the glucose it's got, uh, the carbohydrates, and then it will be forced to switch on to fat for energy, fat and ketones. And when that happens, your cancer cells cannot get energy. So even if you, even if you're not eating um, a really healthy diet, if you had cancer, if you fast, your body will starve those cancer cells. And yeah. it's really that easy that you can just start fasting um, to, to get rid of them and then really control your diet and, and you can control it. Obviously, if you have a healthy diet to begin with, you can prevent yourself ever getting cancer. But if you do get it, fasting is, is absolutely one of the, the top things that, that you can use for it. Yeah, and, and as you say, just let, let the body do its magic. You know, let yeah. it do its magic. I don't think people realize just how how powerful and how smart the, the, the body is and how capable it is if you leave it alone to do its work. And by that, um, by that, I mean, don't eat. Don't, don't take in calories. You know, <laughs> give, it, give it a break. You know, I know we, 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 we sleep. And let, the, let the body do its magic and do all these amazing processes. You know, the cell regeneration, the burning of fat stores, you know, and, and that will obviously st uh, starve the, the, the cancerous cells so that they're not getting access to that energy. So um, ju just, just through the process of not eating, there's just amazing things that happen and, and that amount. For me, finding, I mean, I'm talking firsthand here, you know, because I'll do 20 hours a day, you know, minimum. And I've never, I've, I've had more energy, I have more energy than ever. I can work out twice a day. I can be very productive and, and work, uh, you know, with my daily tasks, high energy. And even when it comes to, you know, half six, seven o'clock, I could actually still just carry on and, and for, like for the rest of the night. But I enjoy eating, so it's it's time it's time to eat. But um, the other thing that you were, you know, the other thing, and and, that, and my body thanks me for that because it's had yeah. its time to to perform all these processes, and now it's ready to um, to absorb uh, nutritious food. Um, but yeah, the, the, well, another thing, what you were saying about you know a lot of these people, and that's, it's very big in in, in, the, in the fitness world, these influencers, and, and just the, the sort of general um, approach um to to weight loss and getting in really good shape you know you have to eat a certain amount of of meals like throughout the day you, you, as i said in a previous podcast that does get your result but it's a short-term band-aid solution and it doesn't provide um long-term longevity because you're you're completely bypassing all the benefits the health benefits that you get during fa during fasting and if, if you wanted to lose weight and get in great shape, you can still do that during fasting, plus get all the benefits that come with it. I, I mean, you, I thought of this analogy the other day. It's almost like um, somebody who gets paid uh, a certain amount every month and they spend all their money, um, they live paycheck to paycheck. So they, they could have a great time throughout the month, you know, buy everything that they want and, you know, get the results that they want but at the end they've almost get that month they've almost got nothing left but they get paid again and then they just do the same thing again whereas somebody who fasts doesn't spend all their money they they, they keep some of that aside they keep some of that money aside so that every month they're built they're actually they've actually got credit they've, they're actually building up their savings so that when a problem occurs you've got a pot there that's ready pot of money there that's ready to go and take care of that problem that if you spend money on you can sort the problem whereas people who live paycheck to paycheck they if they come off that diet and and they, they don't exercise if they start eating inflammatory foods they're going to put the weight on a lot quicker they don't have any credit with their body they don't have a build-up of of um resilience they don't have they don't they don't have those processes because those processes that are induced during fasting haven't taken place they're going to pile that weight a lot on a lot more and their body's not in a strong enough state to deal with it. Whereas somebody who's gone through the, the fasting method and eaten, eaten well and can find their, their food to a certain window, they can take a couple of weeks off and eat, eat junk food and they won't put the weight on anywhere near as quickly. You know, their body will retain that muscle mass because of all the benefits that have that they have 
procure during the fasting period. Yeah, absolutely. Your body's going to be in a much better condition. And also, yep. like you said about the, it's a short term thing eating like that. And it's, it's for, like for weight loss, you, you might lose some weight doing it, as you said, which you'll probably put on after, but your body's actual health, it's not good for that. You, you're going to be damaging your healthy in that stuff um, and spiking it. Um, and, and like you said, it's, it's not hard to go that long without eating food. The no. problem is that the majority of the, the world is actually suffering from malnutrition. Uh, people think of malnutrition as in starving, like starving kids in Africa or something. But the majority of obese people in the West are suffering from malnutrition. They're, they're overeating, but, but they're malnourished because they're not getting the actual nutrition they need. And that is yeah. why they feel they need to constantly eat because they're not giving their body what it needs. They're giving it a load of sugar, which it doesn't need and which is harming it. And they're not giving it what it does need. So if you just eat what your body actually needs, you can go a long time without food. Absolutely fine. And in fact, on that subject and on the subject of fasting, I'm near 48 hours fasted at the moment because um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I've got um, just a uh, bacteria uh, infection from, well, sort of food poisoning from some chicken that we had last week um because i my son had a little bit of a dodgy stomach so did my wife so i'm pretty sure that i've yeah. got that just a couple of days on and off and um, so i'm just i'm fasting to to get rid of it and there's research i i've looked into it there's research that um with any type of infection whether it's you know bacterial food poisoning any infection fasting will massively help it if you fast uh, they've done lots of studies in mice and and then there's anecdotal evidence within humans but that they had a much better reaction got over it much quicker um, their body dealt with it much better if they fasted. So if, yeah, if you just fast, sure. the it will get rid of the the bad stuff. And so you know, I'm I'm nearly 48 hours in, and I feel okay. Yeah, I feel a bit hungry, of course, but absolutely fine. And our, our bodies can Maybe go so. a long time fasted without um, without actually needing food. It's it's our head, it's our mind. Our, yeah, our mind tells all, us yeah. we're hungry. Yeah, yeah, and it tells us we need food, but we don't. You know, sometimes you can, you know, I used to be like this. I, I used to eat all the time. I'd eat regular. I couldn't go out without breakfast. And if I didn't eat for like, you know, four or five hours, I'd start feeling like I was running out of energy and I desperately needed to eat. But that's just in my head. Your body can last, you know, even like an average sized person that's not overweight, you could easily last a week just on water. Easy. And if you're yeah. an obese person, way longer because your body uses the fat. But the yeah. thing you have to do is you have to get past that first point. For people who are eating high carb, there's going to be a point where you're going to feel really bad and feel really hungry because your body's still trying to run on glucose and carbs and it's running out of it. And it's saying, Hey guys, you know, we're running out, you need to eat. But if you push past that point, then it has to switch over to fat for energy and then it can go for ages. So for us on a, you know, we, we're not running on carbs anyway. So it's kind of a, easier for us because we don't have to go through that hard point. You know, I'm, I'm not running on carbs anyway. I'm running on fat, so there's no change for me. For someone running on carbs, yes, day one, day two, probably will be hard. Your body's saying, hey, we need carbs. Give us some food. But if you go past that, it switches onto fat, and it's like, oh, hey, actually, we're fine. I think it was, I think it was Jason Funger on his um, podcast where he said about, you know, if, if you're obese, obviously obesity is a, a risk factor for, for cancers. Like if you're obese and you stop eating, you'll lose weight. Like that, that's an unavoidable science. If you, if you stop eating, yeah. you will lose weight um, and your body will be absolutely fine. You, you can last. You need to drink water, obviously, um, and you might need to make sure that you're getting enough electrolytes if you're going to be fasting for a long period of time. But that's all you need. You know, you, your body can go without food for longer than you think. Oh, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, I've done a couple of... That, they weren't actually... It was a couple of 24-hour fasts, but I did do one, I think it was 36 hours because I went the whole day, then into the next day till about two in the afternoon or something. And um, the only the only real... Uh, it was it was just slightly irritating because, you know, I enjoy eating, but at no <laughs> point, at no point did my energy levels drop. My energy levels were, were high the whole time because... Um, they, my body was getting access to the fat stores, so it was burning fat. Just caught up, oh, not getting food. That's fine. Go to the fat stores, you know. Whereas, as I was saying before, the ones who are constantly in a fed state and feeding their body a certain amount of carbs, it's going to the carbs to to burn that, which is not. They're not getting access to the fat stores, so therefore, when they 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 come off that, their body isn't in the position. It's not. 
it's not used to, to going straight to the fat stores to, to, to burn off, which hence um, the weight gain, you know. Um, so the, these are the, 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 the benefits are, are endless. And um, it was interesting what you said about the, the food poisoning, about, you know, the chicken, you know, because, um, you know, that, that, that sort of, I mean, I'm not sure if it's related, but um, on when I was listening to Dr. Anthony Shoffey, Chafee. Uh, Chafee, Chafee, yeah. my apologies, you know, um, <laughs> which I found his stuff, you know, really interesting. He was yeah. talking about um, the transition away from vegetables, you know, and onto, just, onto eggs and meat. Um, and, you know, what he was saying is that um, you know, obviously the, the mainstream try and purport that vegetables are, you know, re- really, really good for you. Um, but actually, you know, studies have found that, that mushrooms that we use in our diet are like 500 times more carcin- carcinogenic than the, the pesticides that are sprayed on them. So they, they, you know, Brussels sprouts, they've got, I think, 106, 136 uh, yeah. identified carcinogens in them, you know, but, but, but what is purported is that Brussels sprouts and vegetables are, are really, really good for you. There's, there's over a thousand... Uh, not even, I think it was more like 10,000 times more naturally occurring toxins in vegetables um, that we eat than the pesticides that are sprayed on them. But, you know, we're, we're trying to, we're, they're trying to convince us that we should continue eating these um, because yeah. vegetables don't want you healthy. They don't want you getting access to, to that, their nutritional value. And it, it stops the, when you're, when you're eating um, meat with that and the protein, it stops you it hinders your ability to get access to that full percentage of protein. You know, I think um, our, our guest, um, Akis, had, had uh, touched on that um, yeah. really well in a previous podcast. Yeah, that's something that people need to bear in mind is it's like just you say, oh, I'm going to eat more meat. But if you're still eating it with vegetables, it, it, it's restricting you from absorbing all of that. You know, people need yeah. to bear that in mind. And Stricts as you said the about the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pesticides, the toxins in them, yeah, that... They, they are full of toxins and people say, oh yeah, but there's, you know, there's some good stuff in them too, which yeah, there is. But again, you actually won't absorb a huge amount of that and you have to, you have to weigh it up. Positives and neg- okay, there's some vitamins and nutrients in them, but there's also a load of toxins in them. Or I could go and eat meat, which has a load of nu- way more nutrients and exactly what I need in it without the toxins. Like what, what are you going to choose? And it's not even like, um, vegetables are really that nice like <laughs> I yeah, mean, some, yeah, yeah some people might like them i mean I, like I, I said for me for the plants i miss are just fruits fruits i enjoy fruit yeah, um, yeah. and and that's one of the things i miss um would be fruit but vegetables uh, no problem without vegetables um, and yeah. pasta bread i'm fine without that Fr- uh, fruits are only what i miss because i've always had a sweet tooth and and um obviously and the other thing to bear in mind with all, all these plants that we eat is they didn't exist uh you know not even 100 years ago so pretty much all of the vegetables we eat today are are man-made yeah they're not you know if you say oh well you know ten thousand years ago you know where they had to they might have ate some some plants or some fruit here and there yeah they might have uh that they would have to have survived sometimes probably more fruit but what they would have ate then was nothing like now fruit now has been made really sweet packed full of sugar it wouldn't have had as much sugar back then everything like bananas are not naturally even yellow or like that apples used to be little and sour now they're yeah. big and sweet yeah. broccoli never existed i think i think and um, broccoli there's broccoli kale lettuce there's there's about five six things which all come from basically a cabbage that they've they've been grown from that they're the same but and, and a cabbage didn't even used to look like a cabbage but that you know that they're all man-made and they're trying to say this is natural and whatever like, no, like me, like even with, you know, with cows, obviously, you know, we, we spoke to Sam, uh, the beef farmer, and that was a really great talk. And yeah, they might select um, the bull they use uh, to reproduce to try and get the best things. But, you know, they're not um, modifying the genetics manually. They're just, you know, trying to breed them to get the best. So, yeah, OK. Sure. Yeah. The meat we eat might be slightly different from what it was 10,000 years ago, but yeah. not that much. And it's not got worse for us with plants. All they've done is made it slightly less poisonous so that we can manage to eat. it. It's not really any more nutrition than it would have had back then. It's just less poisonous. Oh. And, yeah. 
you know, why would we want that to be a, a huge part of our diet? Yeah. Yep. And it's, it's all, it's all these modern so-called enhancements that, that, um, it's, it's almost similar to like coffee now, you know, you, you, you can't just go in and get a normal cup of coffee like you used to. They add all these <laughs> other little things in the vanilla and syrup That's and eat this flavor and that flavor, you know, and, uh, you know, try and make it very enticing, um, you know, uh, for, in terms of the, 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 the the way they present it and also that the taste that you're getting something better, but all it's doing is adding more sugar and, the, you know, the sugar and glucose into the, into the mix. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing about fruit is, um, I've actually, I'm, I, I'm actually using that now to try and replace, um, anytime I'll have like chocolate, I'm so reducing the amount because I do have a sweet tooth. I do. I, I still do enjoy it, but at least I've put my, I create the platform and the conditions for my body to deal with it the most effectively. But still, I'm trying to uh, reduce the amount of that and incorporate more fruit in. Um, so I've had uh, I had some blueberries, which are actually, as far as fruit goes, more of the the decent the, the decent um, uh, bet the, one of the better ones that you can have um, in terms of its properties. Um, and some some cherries um, and like a bowl of ice cream. You know, so I'm trying to incorporate a bit more of that and 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 reduce the amount of um, the amount of chocolate and crisps. I'm pretty much um, not not fully, but I've really reduced any any crisps and nuts that I have now, which is which is great. And I'm also now um, really putting um, a ceiling on uh, lowering the ceiling or throughout the day or, or the time when. You know, I stopped taking in calories, so I'm very aware of that. That's now like pretty much ten o'clock now. So I've got a three hour window or three and a half hour window there um, that my body's now really adapted to. Um, and I knew I, I actually did a little experiment. So um, I think last week, the well, last weekend, I had some lunch. It was actually quite a healthy lunch. It was like half two in the afternoon. My eggs. I had a bit of rocket. Um, a scrambled eggs, a bit of rocket, some avocado there. And even though it was still, you know, the, obviously you're getting the nutrition from eggs and my body was able to digest it quite well, still felt kind of full. And it was almost like my body was saying, you don't need that. You don't need to do that, you know. <laughs> so it was just yeah. a reminder of actually how far I've come and how far everyone else can go, you know, as well. If they just start, you know, with the base level of um, 16 hours, you know, of which you're sleeping for half of it anyway. And, you know, get your, um, and, and, and just start the process from there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, anyone can do it. Absolutely anyone can do it. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a prime example. I, I didn't think I could go more than a few hours without food. I didn't think I could ever go without breakfast. I had to have it any time I left the house. and. I transitioned to it completely fine and and reasonably easily as well. Obviously, if you're trying to intermittent fast and you're eating a poor diet, it's going to be harder because you're yeah. you're not filling your body. If you, you need to give your body what it needs, and then it can comfortably go a long time without being fed. Like you say, like you know, because we're eating properly. As I say, I've been nearly forty eight hours and I'm hungry, but I feel fine. Um, but if I was eating a high carb diet you know 12 hours in i'd probably be like man i need to eat this is this is hard but you know anyone can do it improve your eating and definitely use intermittent fasting and um, like longer fasts like now probably now and again you could do them to kind of really give you a chance or if you if you become ill if you you know like i said if you get an infection or anything like that a, a fast is great for that but sure. da yeah. daily people should be using intermittent fasting daily. Like you said, it's easy. You're asleep for half of it. As you said, it's so easy, like skipping yeah. breakfast, even if like, I, I don't eat till the evening, you know, I, I'll just eat in the evening. I'll go the whole day. But even if you just did, like you said, lunch and dinner, you're still getting 16 hours. You've only got to miss breakfast. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. And, and it's not hard and it's going to give you health benefits. So I'd encourage everyone to clean up their eating and to definitely employ intermittent fasting into into their diet and however long whether they do 16 whether they do 20 whatever even if you don't do it every single day even if you did five days you know four or five days of the week intermittent fasting the other days you went normally it's you're going to get some benefits still so 
definitely encourage people to do that. And and as you said, sure. any anyone can do it. No matter where you're starting from, you can do it. And, and you can absolutely make a difference to your health. And obviously, like we were talking about today, cancer, you know, it's one of the most serious things out there. It's the, it's the second highest killer in the world after heart disease and, and it's catching it up to be honest it's probably going to overtake it soon which yeah. shows that we're that we're making no progress on cancer so it's a really really important thing and just through your diet and lifestyle you can control it and and if you know god forbid if anyone gets cancer again you can control it and reverse it through your diet and lifestyle you don't need to do these these treatments and another thing just quickly i will we'll, we'll wrap it up in a minute but one sure. of the things as well that on cancer is that um, get, taking a biopsy is something they do, which is taking a biopsy is one of the worst things they can do. Yeah. Because when you get a tumor, a tumor is essentially your body trying to protect itself. So it's wrapping up these cancerous cells within a tumor to try and control them. When they go in and take a biopsy, they cut it open and they take, they cut a bit out. But what they do is they release it and those cancer cells then are released into the body and they can just go anywhere around the body and spread it. So the a biopsy is one of the worst ways to diagnose a condition of cancer that they, they shouldn't do biopsies. It, there's no yeah. real need. And they are, they are developing. Um, there's um, actually one of the other podcasts I sent you with Thomas Seyfried. Um, that's really, you, you should watch that one. He's, he's so good on the subject and he, they're, they're kind of developing these liquid biopsies where they can, you know, diagnose it without having to cut it out, but cutting it out is, not a good thing to do. And the, the treatments, as we said, with you want to avoid um, chemo and radiation are not good for you. There's um, a lot of cases in, um, there's a type of brain tumor, glioblastoma, uh, GBM, yeah. they call it, which is, which is really bad. And you, you know, you're given about 12 to 18 months to live when you get it, but through diet, you can live along, there's lots of guys that live, you know, 10, 10 years and more by controlling their diet. But with some of these people, they've, um, really controlled their diet and been able to shrink it down um, and to be healthy. But some of them have eventually opted for radiotherapy to try and remove it completely. And within having the radiotherapy within six, 12 months, they're dead. Like, really? yeah. yeah, seriously, the, yeah. The, the radiotherapy is, you, you don't want to do it. Uh, Dr. Shafee actually shared a story of uh, a, a friend he knew um, who she managed hers with diet for a long time. And then she kind of slipped off it, got lazy and it came back and she decided to opt for radiation. And within a couple of months, she was, she was dead. Yeah. Cause I mean, radiation and chemotherapy, they cause cancer. They're carcinogens. Yeah. What, what they're hoping is that it will poison the cancer enough to kill it, but you, it won't poison you enough to kill you. That's what they're hoping. Yes. That it will kill one without the other. But it's poisonous. So if you can control it through diet, then you don't need to do those treatments. Or even if you do, your body responds better, like we said about the research with the ketogenic diet. But if you eat the right diet, you can control it yourself. And also, if you eat the right diet in the first place, you won't even get it. So, I mean, that is really what we want people to take from this is that cancer is entirely down to, uh, it's a metabolic condition. It's down to your lifestyle and your diet. You can avoid getting cancer and lower your risk to pretty much zero by eating properly, using fasting. And if you have got cancer or you know someone who's got cancer, diet and lifestyle is their best way to fight back against it rather than the treatments and drugs that they're going to be given. Because as well, when they do these treatments, they don't even talk to you about your diet and lifestyle afterwards. They, they, they give you treatments done. Okay, yeah, you're good. Off you go. Carry on with your life as normal. No, your lifestyle is what gave you that in the first place. Why yeah. are you going to go and carry on? You know, that there should be every single person who's diagnosed with cancer should be given education and training on how to eat properly, uh, how to look after themselves, and they should employ that while they get the treatment and afterwards, but they don't get given anything. No. And uh, just just on just on that point, that that's something that that that, that comes from the whole medical industry, you know, the do doctors and nurses, they have to lead by, I would say lead by example and be able to be able to promote the basics you know yeah. that it, it's about self responsibility and accountability and eat, eat the right things intermittent, intermittent fasting and making sure that your insulin levels are low and that's what which, which yeah. is what causes a lot of these diseases and fasting completely offsets that so absolutely you know, perfectly put 
Yeah, that's absolutely key. And and on the, uh, we'll speak more on this on another episode. But one of the last things on insulin too is that um, insulin is not often tested for that. Like for diabetes, they'll test your glucose levels. But the the issue you have is that insulin levels can be raised for years before your glucose becomes raised because your insulin is raised to deal with higher glucose. And for a long time, it will manage to keep your blood glucose at the right level, but your insulin is still high all the time. And eventually it's too much for your insulin to deal with. Then your blood glucose goes high. Then you get diagnosed with type two diabetes. But for the previous 10 years, you've had high insulin, which is giving you higher chances of cancer, heart disease, and all these other things. So, you know, if, if you've, if you are having health issues, ask for a, a fasting insulin test from your doctor and see if you've got high insulin because that is the first kind of signal is is the high insulin levels so people should test for that because that happens a long time before before the glucose um but yeah so that's yeah. i think we'll, we'll wrap that up today i think that's a lot of information that is there for people that they hopefully find healthy um, if, if you know anyone with cancer or if you have cancer yourself or you've had cancer in the past absolutely implement these things with diet and lifestyle and fasting and if you're completely healthy now that's brilliant but still implement it because that's going to keep you healthy and For people sure. need to think people need to think about long term don't think about oh, i feel great today so i'll eat what i want no think about i want to still feel great in 10 years time so i'll uh, i'll look after myself i think that's uh, pretty much that will sum up uh, this week thank you uh, again for for coming on uh, barry we'll be uh, having another podcast next week we'll, we'll speak to everyone again then in case you, unless you have any uh, last words to leave everyone with no i think that that's uh, that that's a perfect uh, wrap up um thanks again for having me really enjoyed it and uh yep fully um yes it's, it's it's certainly something just just the, the intermittent fasting is certainly something that i um if I, when that when i would uh, when I will work with people in the BK Athleticism program, for example, that's exactly the method that I would use um, with with all, with all the benefits. But um, yeah, great, great to be on. A lot of great information there. I hope uh, everyone took value from it. And looking forward to the next one. Absolutely, yep. Fasting is so powerful. You, everyone needs to implement that in their diet, no matter what they eat. Um, yeah, awesome. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I uh, look forward to the next one already. I hope everyone uh, listening will be too. Uh, we'll see everyone again next week and let's get optimal together. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into the show. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover on the podcast or you'd like to appear on it, then please contact us at hwpoduk at gmail.com on our website, which is healthwealthuk.com or on any of our social medias, which are at hwpod. UK. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share it with all your friends and family and we will see you next week.